basis of frames. A typical reinforced concrete structure is basically an assembly of the structural elements which are made of reinforced concrete. This include the slab, the beam, the columns, the foundations, and even the walls. These structural elements are normally cast in situ so that the entire structures behave as a monolithic frames. The internal stresses developed within the structural element can easily be transferred from a structural element to another element. With that, a reinforced concrete structure is typically analyzed as a rigid frame. It is more economically analyzed so. The columns and the main beams within the frame structures are considered a series of the rigid panels frame which can be divided into two main classes. This include the brace and unbrace conditions. The brace frames are typically supporting the vertical load only, while the unbrace conditions have the frames supporting the vertical load together with the lateral loads. Under the brace conditions, there will be no lateral load to be transmitted within the columns and beams. The lateral loads are normally resisted by the shear walls, lift shafts, or the stairwells. As for the unbraced conditions, the frame structures is to resist the lateral load which cause the bending, shearing, and axial loads onto the beam and columns. The design and analysis for the unbraced conditions are typically more tedious and complicated. For the time being, we focus on the analysis of the frame. Brace frame. The brace frame are normally supporting the vertical load only. Let's say this is the global frame of the building. It has several story. The frame structures is theoretically to be analyzed floor by floor. For simplicity, it can be analyzed in the mode of substitute frames. The substitute frame has the height H1 and H2 equals to the story height of the structures. We will use the concept of moment distributions in order to determine the moment share in the columns and beams. Analyzing this subframe is basically analyzing the entire frame. The moment and shear developing within every member here can be adopted directly for the design. The disadvantage is the calculation step is relatively long and tedious. It can be further simplified by taking portions of this subframe to be as per indicated here. The story height will be the same. However, the stiffness of the beam from the both side it will be half of the stiffness as per the subframe here. This subframe theoretically is able to analyze the middle beam here and the columns you will be able to obtain the moment and shear load on the middle beam here and to obtain the moment acting on the column. But you will unable to obtain the shear load acting on the column. 
Also, this subframe is only applicable when the center span is greater than the two adjacent spans. You may also simplify the subframe further into this subframe. With that, you are only able to analyze the moment at the column. The K for the beam for the both sides of the column will be half of the stiffness of the original beam. Depending the subframe that you are using to analyze the structures, the design moment of the column may vary slightly. You may choose any of the method depending on your needs. Whether you like it to be more precise or more simplified.